everyone, it's Danny. Alrighty, for those of you who know me, you know that I mainly make orchid videos. I am an avid orchid passionate. But today, I will be discussing about vegetables. And today, I am actually at my brother's place. He is just putting up together a vegetable garden and he has the sprouts right here. This is just a part of them. And since today, we'll be discussing about plant viruses, I decided to stop by and actually test a few of his plants to see if they're okay and also show you the tests that I'm gonna be using, how to use them and why is it important to test for viruses. Alrighty, let's get started. Alrighty, so what are plant viruses? Well, just like in the case with humans, plant viruses are pathogens that attack a plant, specifically the tissue of a plant. And just like with humans, there aren't any known cures for viruses. Now, a virus-infected plant can actually transmit the virus to other plants and it can actually destroy crops quite fast. So it is a very serious issue in the world of agriculture. Now, of course, there are different types of viruses. All of them manifest themselves in a specific way, but all of them have one single purpose, to actually feed on the plant and, of course, to kill the plant or to make it so it is not a vigorous plant, it does not grow well, and, of course, it does not give you the fruit or the vegetables you are waiting for. Now, the battle against viruses is an ongoing war, actually, and it's a very serious issue because viruses are responsible for losing tons of crops and tons of money and tons of fruits and vegetables because it does not have a known cure. So the best measure of preventing a virus infestation is to actually test crops and specific plants in general. So today I'm going to be using the Agdia Immunostrips. These are very easy to use tests. You can perform a test in your home and it only takes a few minutes and you will have a fast answer if somehow you have a plant which displays some curious or bizarre signs. So today I'm going to be testing my brother's vegetable plants for three viruses. Okay, so the first virus we're going to be testing for today is the tomato spotted wilt virus. Now, this is a virus that is usually spread with tomatoes, but it doesn't only affect tomatoes. The signs of a virus include some circles appearing on the fruit itself and also on the leaves. It is a bit more obvious on other plants who have a flat leaf, not so much with the tomatoes, but of course the problem with tomatoes is that the fruit becomes unedible, so you really don't want to have this virus in your crops. So I'm going to be showing you how to test for this virus using the Agdia test strips and following the same procedure you can actually test for other viruses as well using the other test strips offered by Agdia. So when you're going to purchase your virus test kit, you will be receiving a bag which will say refrigerate because these tests need to be kept very cool in the refrigerator between 4 and 6 degrees Celsius. You will also get a tube which actually contains the test strips which we're going to be using today and they will actually tell you if your plant is infected or not. You will also find the envelopes with the reactive fluid. This is the place where you will put the sample of a leaf from the plant you want to test. I will show you in a minute. And also you will receive the user guide which tells you exactly how to use these tests and of course how to read them. Alrighty, so let's get to it. Okay, so before actually starting to test the plants, it is important that you wash your hands properly with soap, especially if you've worked with other plants prior to this. Then you should get yourself a pair of scissors or a blade which needs to be sterilized. You can sterilize the scissors with alcohol, bleach or even a torch, whatever feels comfortable to you. I actually sterilized the scissors with some alcohol. Now that you're ready, all you have to do is cut a portion of the plant you want to test, specifically a portion of a leaf. Of course, if your plant is bigger, you do not need to cut all the leaf, but my plant here is quite tiny. So I will actually cut almost an entire leaf, but you don't really have to do that. If you read the instruction, you will see the dimensions of the samples you actually need to cut. So I will cut a sample like this. Then you need to cut the top of the envelope with the reactive fluid, like so, and then insert inside the envelope with the reactive fluid the sample of the leaf you just cut, like so. Then we actually need to crush the sample leaf. To crush it, you need to use a blunt object. I like to use the back of the scissors, actually. So find yourself a flat surface and crush the leaf. The 
The color of the fluid inside the envelope should be green at this point. Then take out one of the strips inside the tube with the strips and insert it in the envelope with the reactive fluid. When you insert it, be careful that the fluid does not reach above the green line. At this point, you need to wait for a few minutes until the test will show you if you have a virus plant or not. During the waiting process, you need to keep the envelope vertically, so do not place it horizontally. So at this point, you can already see the fluid starting to go up this test strip. Now we need to wait a few minutes until the control line appears so we can read the test. Now while we wait, let us take a look at the instructions. A positive test should have two stripes, as you can see here. This indicates that our plant is infected with a virus. In case our plant is not infected with a virus, we will have only one line showing on the test. This is the control line. This actually tells you that the test is valid and it worked, but your plant is not infected with any virus. Alrighty, now that we know this, let's take a look at our test. So a few minutes have passed and if we take a look at our test, we can see we have one single line and this is the control line which is situated above. If there would have been two lines showing, then our plant would have been infested with a virus. But since there's only the control line, we do not have a virus plant. So yay for my brother, he's gonna have himself tomatoes that are infected with the tomato spotting wilt virus. The next virus we'll be testing for is the impatience necrotic spot virus, also known as INSV. Now, this virus doesn't only affect impatience plants, of course, it can also infect vegetables like tomatoes and other ornamentals and also orchids. It has been believed that it was a strain of the tomato spotted wilt virus, but recent researches show that it's a separate strain, it's a separate virus. In any case, the plants infected with this virus of course will not be vigorous, they will not produce the fruit you are um, expecting them to produce and so on. Just like any other virus, it seriously affects the health and the well development of a plant. So when you're gonna order the test from Agdia, you will of course receive the tube which contains the test strips, also the envelopes with the reactive fluid and also a user guide so you know exactly how to use these tests and of course how to read them. So we'll follow the same procedure as earlier and we're gonna test another tomato. Okay, so the results for the INCB tests are here and as you can see I only have one strip showing on the test here. So if we look in the instructions, we can see that a negative result will only show one strip. If I would have had two strips, then my plant would have been infected with the INCV virus. And as you can see, it is not. And the third test we're gonna use is actually for the potivirus category of viruses. This includes quite a lot of virus strains, which are related to each other, but affect plants differently and they affect other plants and so on. So this test strip actually uh, tests for a multitude of viruses, not only for one. Now, when you're gonna test with this, you will not know the specific virus you have. You will only know that it belongs in the potivirus category if the test comes out positive. But in the case that the test comes out negative, you know that your plant is not infected with any of the potivirus strains available. So when you're gonna order the test from Agdia, you will receive the tube with the test strips. Also, the reactive fluid and of course a user guide to know how to use this test and to know how to read it. So let's test a cucumber plant. So here we have the results for the potivirus test and as you can see I only have one strip showing. If we look in the instructions we can see that one strip showing um, is a negative result. So this cucumber plant was not infected with a potivirus. Now, my brother's plants have been grown inside, so there aren't any pests here and they're pretty safe. The problem will come when your plants will go outside or if they are raised outside where there are other insects and so on. The problem is that insects are actually vectors for carrying viruses. So if you only have one single plant which is virused, you can spread the virus disease to all the other plants. And this is something you're not looking for. So whenever you notice signs of wilting or not vigorous growth, or patterns of spots or rings um, on your plants, you should definitely, definitely test them because some signs of virus are not that visible while others might be, but sometimes it's already too late. 
Okay everyone, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Even if it wasn't with orchids, I will do a video with testing orchids as well on my channel. So if you're interested in orchids, do check out my channel because everything is related to orchids. But if you have yourself a small vegetable garden, I hope this was useful to you and I will try to add more information about plant viruses in the description below. Also, I will add the link towards Agdia and towards the places you can actually buy the test strips for yourself. The tests are actually super Super, super easy and actually very accurate. I have been using them for orchids for a year and a half or two right now and I'm addicted to them because you never know. Sometimes you do have some virus plants, virus orchids, whatever, which can actually damage your whole garden or your whole growing space and it's simply not worth it really. So you have all the information below. You have the Agdia website so you can check it out what other tests uh, they have and also learn more about their tests and about their work so whether you are a home grower or a home gardener or you are a commercial gardener definitely check the description to learn more information about Agdia and their products so thank you so much Agdia for sending me these tests I cannot wait to use them on my orchids as well but I think my brother is more relieved now that he knows that these crops of his are actually healthy and he's gonna have himself a great little vegetable garden. So thank you guys for watching this, I hope you found it useful. If you want to see more videos from me with orchids in general, you can subscribe to my channel, you can leave me questions and suggestions in the comments section below. If you have questions regarding plants or orchids or Agdia in general, please ask me and I will help you in any way I can. And thank you for watching, I'll see you next time, bye!